Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys, let's continue on with your recommendations and we're going to take a look at the company guys, BNG Foods Inc, which was brought up by Tony Myers, where he's pretty much is asking a bunch of companies. So let's actually analyze all of them and let's actually see if at the current share price guys, this is a good company to buy. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Now, for all of those of you who may not know what BNG Foods Inc. actually does, it essentially manufactures, sells, distributes a portfolio of shelf-stabled and frozen foods and household products in the United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico. The company's products include frozen canned vegetables, vegetables, canola, and other cooking oils, vegetable shortening, cooking sprays, oatmeal, etc., etc., etc. So, pretty much like your day-to-day -day things that you would buy to make like food which is actually really surprising because this is not the company that you would think of when you're buying these kinds of things right you just buy them to buy them you're not really thinking about like oh I, let me buy it from this specific brand you're mainly just buying it because you know you kind of just have to so the fact of the matter is that this consumer staples company might be fairly decent of an investment seeing that well people will always require to you know cook food with oil and with a bunch of other stuff so it might actually be fairly fairly interesting Coming into the calculator, we got the ticker symbol for BGS, a market cap of $925 million, a PE of NA, so that's kind of concerning right there, a current share price of $12.91. Which, looking at the graph, guys, on the one year, they are down 57.39%. On the year to date, they are down 58.73%, with a 52-week range of $12.29 to $34.27. So we are at 52 week lows when it comes to this company they do pay out an annual dividend of 76 cents which is a current yield guys of 5.78 percent a payout ratio of 171.17 percent which is really big guys anything above 100 they're essentially taking on debt for so this is not good to see at all we'll take a look at the payout ratios in regards to the free cash flow in just one second a five-year CAGR of 0.43 with only one consecutive year of dividend growth which is not really that good so looking further into this dividend history, we could see that they have been fairly consistent and actually even increasing this dividend within the past five years. However, guys, as of this year, they have already declared that they are going to cut this dividend from 48 cents to 19 cents, which is fairly bad. And the reason why they only have one consecutive year of dividend payment is mainly because of the fact that, well, ever since they increased it to 48 cents, in 2018, they have kept it roughly the same the whole entire time up until again in December 28, 2022, when they are planning to cut it down to 19 cents. And on top of that, based off of their current shares outstanding, they pay out guys $54.49 million in dividends every single year, which based off of their five-year average free cash flow, once this dividend is paid, they're still left with $36.53 million. However, as of their last year's free cash flow, they're only left with, well, they're left in the negatives, $4 million. So that's really, really bad. They cannot afford this dividend at all in the last year's free cash flow, which is probably why they have cut it now to 19 cents. And these payout ratios, just as we saw in Seeking Alpha, they're very, very high. The last year's free cash flow, it is 108.33%, and the five-year average, it is 59.87%. So when it comes to a dividend perspective, guys, this company clearly cannot afford this dividend at all, and if you're buying it solely for its dividend, then be prepared because they will cut it. In fact, they have already cut it as of recently. So let's take a look at some of these fundamentals. We got the net income five years ago of $217.5 million to one year ago of $67.4 million. That is a decrease of 69%. And you can clearly see that this has been kind of consistently decreasing year over year. The only time where they recently went positive or at least increased it was from three to two years ago when they went from 76.4 million to 132 million, probably because of COVID related, probably people were buying a lot more food, cooking at home because they couldn't go out, right? They, all restaurants were pretty much closed during COVID. So that's essentially why I believe that occurred. But as of one year ago, when restrictions started to be being lifted, you can clearly see that they went down a significant amount overall. I'm 
I'm going to have to give this guy essentially like a 30% when it comes to a grade. Coming into the free cash flow, this is not looking good. Five years ago of negative $22 million to one year ago of $50.3 million. That is an increase of 329% with an average of $91.02 million. However, guys, this free cash was just all over the place. Negative five years ago went skyrocketing up four years ago, then came back down to earth. Significant amount going from $168 million to only $4 million from four years ago to three years ago. Then shooting right back up during COVID and then coming right back down one year ago. So this is all over the place, guys. Not consistent at all. We do have some negative numbers. So I'm essentially going to give this guys like a five percent coming out into the revenue this one's actually looking not too shabby five years ago of 1.65 billion dollars to one year ago of 2.1 billion dollars that is an increase of almost 25 percent with only one year actually coming down a little bit four years ago going from 1.7 billion to three years ago 1.66 billion and then shooting right back up two years ago to almost 2 billion and then as of one year ago almost 2.1 billion so that's actually not too shabby it's not perfect however i will give it an 85 percent coming now into the assets minus liabilities this is actually looking fairly okay i guess you could say as of today they're in the positive by 841.6 million dollars and in the past five years they have been in the positive sure they haven't been consistently increasing but at least they are kind of remaining stagnant right around like the 800 million dollar mark or so which is fairly decent average total assets is 3.57 billion dollars average liabilities is 2.7 billion dollars and doing this difference we get 861.3 million dollars i'm actually going to give this guy like a 50 percent it's you know it's not here nor there it's okay i guess you could say coming down to the cash flow minus liabilities unfortunately this one is getting further and further in the red as of one year ago they're at the lowest point almost a negative $3.1 billion in the red. And this is mainly because of the fact that they're just losing free cash flow, honestly. But they do have a couple of years here and there, well, technically only one year, where they actually brought it back up closer to zero. And that was two years ago during COVID. But I think that was mainly COVID related, which is not surprising in the slightest. Average cash flow minus the average liabilities, we get negative $2.62 billion. Overall, I'm going to give this grade guys like a 30%. Now coming into the shares outstanding, this one could be worse, but also could be a whole lot better. When it comes to shares outstanding, guys, you want a company to be buying back shares, ideally, especially if their shares are really, really cheap. If you see a company that is at 52 week lows and they're just issuing more and more shares, there's something definitely wrong there. At that point, they should be buying back shares, not issuing. But unfortunately, as you can see right here, well, they are increasing it at around 7.82% on the five year, going from 66.5 million shares five years ago to today of 71.7 .7 million shares. And in fact, that is an increase of 4.67% from one year ago to today. So that's really, really bad. Seeing again that they are at the 52 week low, why are they issuing shares? That they should be buying back. Now, they have have bought back a couple of shares going from five to four to three years ago however as of covid guys they started to issue shares so i'm going to give this 40 percent for a grade and when it comes to the cash and equivalents they currently hold 60.1 million dollars with an average of 62.57 million dollars looking at these grades guys we gave them the income of 30 percent free cash flow five percent revenue 85 percent assets minus liabilities 50 percent free cash flow minus total liabilities 30 percent and shares are standing of 40 percent for an overall grade guys of 38 percent yeah, they definitely need to fix these profit metrics. Not so much the revenue, but the net income, the free cash flow needs to be fixed. And once they fix that free cash flow, this cash flow minus liabilities will also get a whole lot better. And hopefully they will begin to buy back shares. But for now, 38%, it is just not a passing grade for me. So now let's actually make some assumptions, low, medium, high, using revenue growth, the projected share buyback, and keeping the recurring rate of return at 10%. For the revenue growth, guys, let's come over here to see Alpha. We can see that the forward is at 3.46 and the year over year has been 5.86. So that's actually fairly easy to make assumptions. We're going to go for a revenue growth of 3, 4, and 5% for each assumption. And now for the projected share buyback, we have seen that within the past five years, they have issued around like 7%. So let's actually say at around 7% for the low assumption, 6% for the median, and 5% for the highest assumption, not 55, 5% for the highest assumption.
And now with that, we do get some target share prices. Now adjusting for debt, we get $36.23 all the way up to $39.61. And then adjusting for debt, this comes all the way down to $5.37 to $8.14. Adding a margin of safety of 5, 10, 15%. This puts me between the ranges of $4.56 to $7.73. Guys, the current share price is $12.91. So a lot of people here would say there's no way that this thing would fall down to eight dollars that's insane well okay uh here's fact though the fact is is that guys their 52 week range is 34 dollars and 27 cents at the peak to 12 dollars and 29 cents at the lowest so if you would have bought this at the peak of 34 dollars and 27 cents well this would have been between the low and median assumption not adjusting for debt so at this point I would have probably told you guys roughly the same that this company should be worth, you know, at around like $5.37 to $6.72. And a lot of you guys would have been like, no, or at least the haters would have been like, no, it will never fall to that. And now what? almost a year later right at the low of this 52 week range we're down to 12 dollars and 29 cents so more than half this company has fallen so there you go so the fact is that it can fall it absolutely can and the fact that after debt this is still telling me that it needs to fall even more it absolutely can fall even more even by half for all we know right so the fact of the matter is that sure right now at the current share price $12.91 not just seeing for debt this is looking like a buy however guys their fundamentals just aren't there and on top of that adjusting for debt this just isn't there either that's just my personal opinion obviously you guys do whatever you want when it comes to this this is why i have this calculator available for everybody to have because all of these numbers can be changed, even the required rate of return. If you want to put a less required rate of return, by all means, go ahead and do it. You guys can change the margins of safety as well. Change these numbers and see where your numbers may end up. Because for all we know, if you guys believe that this company will do a 10% revenue growth and start buying back shares, then these numbers will look significantly different. Obviously, make your own assumptions. This is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So please have this calculator. I have the book value one, the revaluation one, and a dividend tracking sheet, guys, which I just made an update video for if you guys would like to see it. And if you guys would also like to have this one for yourselves. It's a multi-step thing, though, so it may have a little bit of trouble. I'll see if I can get in contact with the other person that I use this calculator with or this tracking sheet with. Hopefully, we can come up with something. But as it currently stands, guys, have it all for free. I'm here pretty much alone. I don't take any sponsorships. I promise I will never take any sponsorship unless it's like food related. We all know what's been happening with all this FTX stuff. I don't want any part of it. Honestly, like I really, really don't. I will only take a sponsorship if it's like, hey, uh, emergency food have it if like a hurricane hits or something you know something like that right or in my case a snowstorm because i live in pennsylvania but um yeah that's essentially it guys all i'm asking for in return for free daily content sometimes even more than that and you know giving out free calculators is just helping grow my channel that's it you know you guys just make everything here possible I never thought I would make it to, you know, I, I never thought I would make it to 100 su su subscribers, let alone almost 1,600. Dear Lord, we're so close to 1,600. It's crazy. Thank you all. I really do appreciate it. I, you know, I... I really do appreciate it. That's why I am more than happy to give up these calculators, make this kind of content, and give you guys even more content. Hopefully, I can get a couple of my friends that know other stuff aside from fundamental analysis like me. One of them knows about technical analysis. If I can get him to make a video, if you're watching this boy, make a video, please, because I really would like other types of content at, on my channel as well. So again, thank you so much for everybody who have subscribed. I really do appreciate it. And now when it comes to this dividend, well, unfortunately, it's not a lot. And actually, this 76 cents is with the current cut. However, putting in $5,725, guys, at the current share price, because it's just such a tiny share price, this would net you 443.47 shares, which would yield you an annual dividends of $337.04, quarterly dividends of $84.26, and a monthly dividend of $28.09. This is massive. However, I just do not see this to be sustainable for several reasons, the payout ratio, as well as the fact that they recently have cut it. So from my personal standpoint, when it comes to a dividend, I would not invest in, in this company solely for its dividend. And the fact of the matter is, is that they don't have the fundamentals to back it up either. So yeah, the dividend is juicy, but 
it's just not really that important to me if it doesn't have the backbone to actually sustain this dividend long term. All in all, guys, thank you so much, Tony, for uh, this company. In my personal opinion, though, it's kind of just not really my forte. Obviously, if you like it, you know, by all means, go ahead. But as it currently stands for me, it is just not in my wheelhouse. And the company still needs to do a whole lot better when it comes to their fundamentals. That pretty much is it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help over the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites. I'll link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And we'll see you all in the next stock analysis of video.